Welcome to Connectronics, I'm Steve, and today you're probably wondering why I have all of these speakers out here and speaker stands. Well, it's because we're going to talk about speaker stands today, and more importantly, speaker placement. So let's go! So, some of the stuff I want to talk about with speakers and speaker stands has to do with the most important thing is the height of the speaker. So you see that the speakers that we have here are all at different heights. So what are you trying to accomplish with the different heights and why do they make the speakers stands in different heights? And so one of the important things to think about, at least for me, is talking about where everybody, well, you know, most people recommend that the tweeter be at or above ear height, slightly above ear height. So basically you sit down and you determine what your ear height is. And when I look over and I look at my ear height sitting on this chair here, and again, it's going to be a little different depending on if you're slouching or your feet are kicked up or, you know, if you're sitting upright whatever but for me it's right around 37 inches 36 to 38 give or take a little bit so that's where you want to determine where your speaker height is is based off of that so for me being at 37 the speaker the tweeter for the speaker should be at 37 or above but that's generalization for most of the speakers and that's what they say but a lot of people will usually talk about how a speaker is overly bright. So what happens is when a speaker's playing straight into the room, you're slightly off access, and the, the fact that it's you know off access will d diminish some of that brightness, right? But as soon as you tow it in, let's say you're trying to improve your imaging, your center focus, you tow that in a little bit, now that speaker's brighter because that tweeter's pointing right at you. So one of the things I like to do is try to kind of be in the middle of that to where you try to get that tweeter off access again so it's not so bright even though the speaker's pointing at you. So how do you do that? That's by getting that speaker up a little bit higher. So one of the things I generally look at, and this is just from me fiddling around with this stuff for years, it, you know, I've been doing Connectronics for since 2000, so 22 years, plus all the time I've had before that. So a couple of decades, man, it makes me sound old. Um, so anyway, with all that time listening, what I've been generally trying to do is find this spot, and to me, bookshelves are perfect for it. You can't always do it on towers. Generally, you can, depending on the design, but two-way bookshelves are the perfect example of this is to get your ear height at the spot in between the tweeter and the woofer. That way, the tweeter is going to be slightly higher than ear, right? So it's slightly off access, not as bright, but at the same time, you're going to improve your center image and have that mid-range and tweeter coalesce better by the time it gets to you because you're right in between that. Um, the other thing is I sometimes like to have that play up over me a little bit trying to raise that that sound stage up a little bit so i don't generally like if i'm sitting there like you know at ear height you're talking like i said 37 inches it's like the voices would be right here and i don't like it where you know, especially if you're listening to some concert stuff every time you're at a concert you're even if you're standing there they're up in, in front of you they're not like sitting in a chair right in front of you you know sometimes maybe playing the guitar or something but i like to try to raise it up just like i am now how do i get voices in the music up at this this height if the speaker is down here it's difficult to do that so by having that speaker raised up slightly tilted back slightly to try to get that sound to come right up over my head kind of raises the imaging of that sound stage up a little bit. So with that in mind, one of the other things I like to do is, depending on the speaker brand, try to get the speaker stands that not only match the speaker, but obviously they're designed for that speaker. 
So, like I just did with these monitor audios here, um, the Focals, that's a perfect example. This is the Focal Cora, the 806. This is the Cora stand, and this stand utilizes two things. And one that's very important that actually I noticed was that we got these speakers in initially, and what I did was put them on a stand like the Pangea stands that we've always used that you know are the stand that we generally go to is I put them on a Pangea stand and I think it might have been up a little higher it might have been on the 28 inch like this which like I said try to raise that up a little bit so for example like I said 37 inches and if I'm looking 37 inches is right here right so by getting this speaker up a little bit I was getting my ear height there which is exactly what I was uh, talking about. However, the way the, the Focal is designed is that they actually it, tilt the speaker back. So it's raked back, kind of like what I was talking about before with trying to bring that back. And they do it in a way that they talk about improving the time alignment. So the time alignment is basically getting this back to where the mid-range and the tweeter, you're talking about the depth of the, the uh, actual drivers to come out at the same time. So it time aligns by the time it gets to you. And so the fact that the, this speaker stand is lower, the standard speaker height, I don't know if you know, is 24 inches. So this Cora stand is just under 22 inches. So it's much lower than most speaker stands. But it being tilted back or raked back slightly is getting that sound up so by the time it comes to you it's up over your ear height. So it's a kind of exactly what I was talking about that I've been trying to uh, accomplish over the years of trying to improve that center image. Now when doing that, the, as soon as I put these stands on, it actually improved not just that sound stage, the center image, and all that kind of stuff. It actually improved the tonal quality, and not by a little bit, by quite a bit. Because out of the box, I was listening to these, and they sounded kind of, kind of bland in some ways, as far as the tonality not being very good. The mid-range was too mid-rangey, if that makes sense. I wouldn't say they're overly bright, as like Focal's always known for. I'm kind of a Focal guy, I like that, but I just think that it was kind of harsh as far as the overall tone, tonal quality is. And so when they got them tilted back slightly, it actually improved that quite a bit, plus having some time on the speakers and breaking it in improved it as well. But the point is, the stands themselves made a big difference and a big improvement on the sound quality of these speakers. So. I know they're all bookshelf speakers and they're designed to sit on a bookshelf or something, but you know, if you're spending money and you care about the sound, you're not going to get the best out of it by just slapping it onto a bookshelf somewhere. And I mean, I think we all can agree that's pretty much what you're going to get is throwing it up there. I just want to fill the room with some music. That's fine. But when you have speakers and you're trying to optimize them the best you can, well then, it's best to figure that out, figure out what type of stand you want to use. So the point is, if you're going to have speakers sitting out in the room or next to an entertainment center or something like that, it has to be on the stand, right? So what's the best stand to put it on? So that's what we're kind of talking about, is how do we optimize the right stand for that? So I'm just going to go through the line here of what we have set up. So the Pangeas that we use, this is our, our good Pangea line. This is a DS300 stand and this one I put in uh, because of these pillars are hollow I filled them with sand I got like 40 pounds of sand filled all these pillars up it's actually filled to probably about here I didn't have enough to quite go all the way which would be kind of anal and I fill it up all the way but it's pretty much right there and so when I filled this up it's like it I mean it hurts my knuckles to knock on it whereas you have ones like that. So if I were to fill these up, it would totally change that sound because it was like that. Not to mention now with the weight of them and 20 pounds of sand, they're pushing 40 pounds right now. So they're very stable. And like I mentioned, this is the uh, the better stand that we have. Um, and the price on that's like 250 for this type of stand. 
And then the one below that, this is the LS, uh, I'm sorry, this is a DS400, whereas this is the LS300. So in my brain, I try to figure out what do they mean by the model numbers. So D is maybe like heavy duty or something, and the fact it's a 400 is because it has four pillars. Whereas this is maybe lighter, so LS, so light stand, and three pillars, so it's a 300. So that's how I remember it. So yeah, DS400, LS300. And the height, again, like I mentioned, this is at 28 inches. So that way, the stand itself, because it is so heavy, I mean, I could go in there and tweak the little uh, spikes on the bottom and tilt it back a little bit. I didn't do that. These stands are generally pretty flat. And then when I set a speaker on it, regardless of what it is, I'm getting that center part to be right around that 36 to 38 inches or so. So, for example, this is the uh, Polk uh, Anniversary Edition the, of the uh, R200. And I put that on there. Look, 37's right here. So, to me, 28-inch stand is perfect for this. Again, it gets it up above that ear height. And now my ear height's right around the, the point between the mid-range and the tweeter. So that sound coalesces. And again, this is another 28-inch stand. Whereas this monitor here is a 24-inch stand. So like in one of the other videos, I talk about how I rake these back. 37 inches is perfect at tweeter height. Now, is that going to make it sound a little brighter or brighter than it should be? Not getting so much mid-range? Possibly. So what I did is I brought those spikes out on the bottom to tilt it back slightly. Now it's going to be playing up over my ears a little more to improve that. So in some ways, it's kind of like the mid-range doesn't get any love. It's everybody like, focus on the tweeter, tweeter at ear height. Well, what about the mid-range? Hmm? Right? That should be uh, getting some love. So then the other thing is, like here, I have uh, the Kef. Um, and this is the for the LS50 uh, uh, stand. We sold the LS50, so this is not a KEF speaker here. This is actually a definitive technology speaker. And they actually have left and right. So if you know what this is, if that's a left or a right, bonus points to you. Put it in the comments. Let me know if you know what that is, if that's the left speaker or the right speaker. They do that because the tweeter's off-center. That has something to do with something else. But anyway, again... This is a standard uh, stand from KEF, and they too set theirs, uh, this is about 25 inches, 24 and 3 quarters or so. And like I said, 24 is pretty standard. Focal is on the low side, you can see that, although the speaker heights are the same. It's kind of weird how that works, right? So anyway, the other thing is then I have this one here, which is, again, an LS300, but very tall. So this is a 36 incher. Now why would you need a 36 inch speaker stand? So where we use these are when people have bookshelf speakers and they wanna have speakers in the room but for surround sound. Now you have it on each side of the couch. The back of your couch might be sitting up around 40 inches or something like that. So the, you know, your couch backs here, you need that speaker to play up over the couch or along on each side, you know, to play and make sure it's over the top. So that's what this we usually use these for. I don't know if it would make much sense to put a speaker on at that height. You know, to be listening to your speakers this high might be a little ridiculous. Um, yeah, I don't know. That would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Seeing two of those, you know, your speakers up this high. I don't know. That'd be kind of weird. But hey, that's what it's for, right? So if you're sitting here, okay, on the couch. Surround sound speakers you generally want up a little bit higher so you have that, you know, angle coming down on, on you. So that kind of makes some sense, right? So that's that. The other thing is on how the speakers themselves um, have spikes on them. Some will have rubber feet. Uh, this is squishy carpet. So, you know, for here I always put the spikes on them. And sometimes I have to step on them to get them to poke through or to level them. So I also put a level on that. And then I might have to tweak one side or the other, you know, to get it to uh, level out. Um, but the other thing, too, is uh, just kind of looking at the different stands, it has to do with the speaker design as well as the height. So, like I said, the height is the number one factor. 
Now, the other things to think about is the overall design, where I mentioned this one having three pillars versus the heavy duty having four. So now you're having to stand at the same height. How do you have a better stand? So this one, right, compared to which one do you think is going to be better? So same height, but now you're talking $250, fill it with some sand compared to $150. See, that's a big difference right there. Um, the monitor audio stands, I did not fill these. So they have a little ring to it, not bad, not as bad as this. Um, and those, because they match, they have these fancy big feet on it. Now you're buying it based off of design and look and everything to match with the other speakers. Um, so those are $710. So, you know, maybe it's a little too much. The one thing I will mention though, is like I said, I always try to match the stands with the product. Like I said, monitor with the monitor speakers. But where it makes most sense is like I mentioned with the Focal. Now it makes sense to do the Focal, like almost as if you have to, compared to doing some of the other Pangeas. Luckily for the Cora, the Focal stand, these are, I think, 290. So it's not bad. And they say, you know, it had the Focal branding on it. They look pretty cool and stylish. That's nice. But we've done some other speakers, when you get into the higher end, where you're talking speaker stands can be $1,500 or $2,000, and you're paying basically for design. It has nothing to do with the height or whatever, or even like, you know, raking it back. It's all about the overall, you know, design and aesthetics matching the other speakers. Oh, one more thing I was thinking about when looking at these uh, speaker stands as far as the design part of it was how the Def Tech being black and silver, you know, because Def Tech doesn't make their own stands for their bookshelf, so you need a stand. And like I said, always using a Pangea, it would look really nice on that monitor audio stand because the monitor audio stand is silver and black. So in fact, let's uh, try that out. Right, so you can see the monitor silver 100 on the monitor stand. Now we're going to take a Def Tech speaker here and place that onto it. And to me, that's a pretty cool look. So you have the aluminum silver look with the black. I think that's pretty sweet. That's a really nice setup right there. Now, as I mentioned, the other thing to think about would be the height. So where are we at with height on that? 37, 36, so 36 is like right here, 36, 37 is right above that. So this would be a perfect example where if you like that stand, you're gonna have to try to rake that or tow it, not tow it, I guess it'd be raked back, tilt it back to try to get that imaging up a little bit higher for you, you know, to try to get the middle between the two drivers up. But the overall look of that is pretty sweet. So I do like that quite a bit. That's a really nice look. I think I'm going to have to do that. And what's nice is, uh, as I mentioned, I don't know if uh, you've seen the other uh, video with these stands, is how most of the monitors, the other, some of the other speakers, will actually bolt to the bottom of that stand. Whereas like these don't have the screw holes to fasten them. So what's nice is they give you the rubber bushings, so I can use those to just place other speakers on. So I think whenever I demonstrate these or I want to listen to the deaf techs, those are going to be the stands I will use because it gives a nice look. I already have those front spikes, you know, brought down a little bit to tilt it back. I think that'd be a perfect way to do that. So I really like the look of that. So the other thing that I will mention has to do with the height, like I mentioned with here. But where height is also important is I'll show you on this setup here, which has to do with home theater. Now where speaker stands are important in the home theater. So let me spin this around and show you that one. And we're back. So this is our uh, setup for like a living room type surround sound system. So you can see we also have stands here. So this setup we have is the Polk Audio Reserve setup. So these stands are the 24 inch stands 
And so let me take the grills off here and give you a better view of what I'll be talking about. So these stands are 24 inches and you're using that 36, 37 inch ear height, 37's right here, 36 is the tweeter height. <clears throat> so that's good for home theater. And then we also have the Atmos modules which shoot the sound off the ceiling. But another thing to think about is, well, why didn't you just go with the 28 inch, you know, like you mentioned on the other ones. And it's because you have to try to come up with some kind of a compromise with the overall system. So one of the things that I think about with this is with the sound moving across the screen. So one of the things that, you know, is important is not so you have a big U shape or an arc one way or the other. So you talk about getting the center channel as close to the, the TV or, you know, in the home theater, maybe the screen. So get the, the center channel as close to the screen as possible. So when you have all the voices coming out of your center channel, it seems like it's those voices are coming from the screen. And don't mind the fire, it's not that hot. And I just picked that, it's on YouTube, it's not me. I just put something on there, put something on there. Anyway, so I took the center channel, instead of having it just sit on top of this cabinet and be you know, so low, I wanted to bring the center channel up closer to ear height. And at the same time, then I could then get the tweeters to match all the way across. So now as things pan across the screen, that sound is going to pan right across the screen. I'm not going to get any sort of big arc where instead of it going, it's going to go, and you know, and create an arc of that sound. I guess an extreme version of that would be, well, you have to get the center as close to the screen. What if I put the center right on, on top of the screen and put it up here? Well, then your sound, instead of going across the screen, it's going to go from here up and back down, which would be a little obnoxious. So that's something I think about is trying to get that panning perfectly across the screen. So what's the best way to do that in a home theater, obviously, is the same thing they do in the theaters, is they put the speakers behind the screen. That way when people are talking, it's literally coming out of their mouth on the screen. But you can't do that in a living room. You can't do that when you have a TV. And you can't generally do that when you have bookshelf speakers. So again, having the proper stands and setup, utilizing what you have to try to get the best layout is the most important. And that's going to you know, reap you better results in the end than just slapping some speakers somewhere. Like so many times you look through people have nice setups and they'll have a center channel that maybe the cabinet is designed for and the center channel's down there. I don't have ears on my ankles. I don't want a center channel down there. I need to have the voices coming from here. And the thing is, you always get people, I, I don't, you know, I don't know what they're saying. I can't understand them. Well, your center channel's not in the right place. It's in a bad location. And the same thing with the left and rights. Everything has to work out, you know, synergistically, right? So that's one of the things to take into consideration when picking out speaker stands or laying things out. So like I said, I didn't want this center channel sitting here. I wanted to raise it up a little bit. Well, one is if you had a speaker sitting here, you'd have refraction off the, uh, or reflection off of the, the uh, you know, actual, in this case it's glass, you know, having that sound you know, bouncing off, which would color the sound and when sound is accurate and detailed. So I wanted to raise it up for that. So what I did is I just took a box. See, there's a box here. And covered it with this cloth just to set the center channel on it. Bring that up. And you know what? Out of all the people that come in here, no one has even like mentioned it in a way that say, oh, that looks bad. Or it looks, I don't know, out of place. Uh, most people don't notice it. And, and that's the thing. I just use black cloth. A little ingenuity, hey, I'm going to set it on a box, raise that up, improve the sound quality of the center channel, improve imaging all the way across the screen, improve things how they pan, and the overall sound of the system. Now, does that cost me more? No. I mean, what would it have been if I did a bigger, better center channel, but then just sat it here? Or like I mentioned, set it down below. It wouldn't have been the same results. So optimize what you have. And that's the way I go about every system, every project isn't about throwing money at the equipment, but taking the best equipment for the budget or for the project 
and getting the most out of it. And that's what I'm trying to talk about with the speaker stands in general, just getting the placement right, the rake, the raking of the speaker proper, the towing in and out. You know, in this case is a perfect example of a home theater. The other example I gave of the stereo setup, all of that's important. So it has nothing to do with the price or how much money at it. You could just keep throwing money. Same thing with room acoustics. That's a whole other subject. You know, so in a room like this, it's not too echoey. You know what I mean? So the room acoustics are done pretty well. That's definitely something to take into consideration. So um, I think that's about it. I can't really think of too many other things to go over, you know, without making this overly long winded because I know sometimes I like to talk and that's generally what happens when I get customers in here and I start talking or whatever and an hour goes by and but they generally leave better informed which is a good thing right and that's what it's about it's I'd rather have the customer be informed and have them decide what they want to do instead of me telling them you need to do this and then them wondering why do I need to do that I'll you know kind of teach you or explain to you what my th my reasoning is and then okay that makes sense yes I want to do that and that's where I am with like all of this stuff so anyway I think that's it I don't want to go too much but I do appreciate all you guys sticking around to the end to watch this so until the next one stay at it